This lesson deals with passive sign convention. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 1, starting on page 7. Suppose I hook up a two terminal element to a circuit and I label these notes A and B. And I'm going to label the voltage from A to B. And I'll show the current flowing in this direction. Now suppose that V of T and I of T are both positive. Then we have some terminology that we can refer to in this configuration. We said that there's a voltage drop from terminals A to B and that there's a voltage rise from terminal B to terminal A. With our direction of current shown here, the net positive charge is flowing from A to B. We could also say that there's a net negative charge flowing from B to A. If the current moves through a drop in voltage, then its charges lose their energy. If a current moves through a rise in voltage, then its charges gain energy. You can find these definitions on the next page. Whenever the reference direction of current into a two-terminal device is in the direction of the reference voltage drop across the device, then we say that power is absorbed or dissipated. It's also a positive quantity. In other words, the power is equal to the voltage times the current. This is called the passive sign convention. And this is what was shown on the previous page. We say that power is generated or extracted whenever the power absorbed is negative. Let's take a look at some examples here where I can tell you how to interpret signs. Suppose that I have a two terminal element. Again, I label the voltage from A to B and I find or measure that its value is minus three volts. If you flip the polarity here, and I'm going to put the plus sign here and the minus sign here, what results is the change in the sign and the quantity. So our minus three becomes a minus, a minus, or a plus three volts. If you had current flowing from A to B, and suppose that you measure that current and it turned out to be minus six amps. If you reverse the direction of the current arrow, then what you effectively do then is change the sign of what's in these parentheses. So you're getting a, get a minus, a minus, or a plus six amps. And that's how you interpret sign changes and polarity changes. Let's apply this to an example. Suppose that I have a two terminal element hooked up and I measure the voltage from here to here and find that it's 12 volts and that the current is flowing in this direction. That's three amps. Whatever goes in an element has to come out the other sides. Okay, let's calculate the power absorbed. Well, let's make this picture look like the picture we had three inches back. In other words, the polarity here is the opposite of what I had shown before. So let's flip the polarity here and put a plus here and a minus here. And whenever you do that, you change the sign of your symbolic voltage or your measured voltage. Now this looks like the drawing of our definition of power absorbed. Current is going in the plus terminal and coming out of the minus terminal. So the product of these two then would be the power absorbed. So minus 12 times three would give me a minus 36 watts. So this element is actually generating 36 watts of power or absorbing minus 36 watts. Now we could do this problem another way. And let us just take the straight definition of power absorbed. And that is that current enters the plus terminal and leaves the minus terminal. Original problem, we had current flowing in this direction. So for the current to enter the plus terminal and leave the minus terminal, I need to change the direction of my initial definition. And when I do that, I change the sign of the current. In this case, it becomes minus three amps. So now the power absorbed is 12 times minus three. And then again, it's minus 36 watts. Well, things didn't change in terms of our answer if we make changes like this in the circuit, because what we're doing is we're creating the same effect. In the course, we're gonna use a lowercase p with no subscript to indicate power absorbed. You could also emphasize it by putting a subscript AB in it, and I'll occasionally do that. Our textbook uses only a definition of power absorbed, but they're sometimes convenient to actually talk about power generated, especially when you're dealing with sources. So I'm going to take um, a variation on this for the course, and let's put the subscript GEN for generated. So the default notation is the letter P will stand for power absorbed, but if I ever talk about power generated, I need to put a subscript to indicate that that's different than our default definition. So this last example, the power absorbed was minus 36, and the power generated was equal to 36 watts. These are some of the lessons of passive sign convention.